the next step is in our IoT exercise is that how to get our microcontroller connected there. And of course, we start looking for the information from the ARM embed uh, website. And then, you know, all the documentation is in here. So we could go look at the documentation, but we are a little bit lazy. So it's just right here as a search term, the MQTT, because that's the MQTT protocol used in the IoT applications. And then there is an, someone in the, some questions. No, we won't go into questions. Uh, there is something on the hello MQTT on the teams, MQTT team. And it's a code, it's the hello MQTT. Sounds promising, we will have a look on that one. So that's, I already have open here. So in the operating system, there is an MQTT class. And then there is an hello MQTT example on here. And it's otherwise quite nice, but it's using another small display, which we haven't got and so on. But from here, we could have a look at, okay, what, what they have there on the main program and so on. They are using an MQTT library, but this is uh, not up to date. This is from the year 2014. So my colleague tried out to how to create an MQTT application. And so we can have a look on what Petri has done. So you see, all our programs you can find by going to the code and then users and then searching for us with the name. So if you search for Timo Karpinen, you get into my public repositories, the public programs. So what is tested here? So there is the exercise 10, there is the lab work 10, lab work 12, lab work 18A and 18 these would be there as well. Yeah, there is an MC lab 18B, UDP sent receive and so on. So also, Petri. Petri's got an example on the, our Wi-Fi module, the ESP8266 and the Wi-Fi with the MQTT. And that's that one that I have open here. And then you see there is only the main program included. And then there is an embed MQTT library, a library with this name. And then app JSON. And the app JSON is a JSON file giving some definitions for the project. So typically with wireless LAN unit to use, what are the locking credentials in your wireless LAN network and so on. And then the main is of course the main program and these are the libraries used. So to start developing your own, you can actually import this one into your compiler and have a closer look there than what is there in the code. And then we can have a look on the main. And it's not too long. It starts from here and ends in here. Not too many lines. So it should be easy to understand what is what is what is done. So So you are importing, importing a library into your project. So in a compiler, in the online compiler, you select your import library from an URL, and then you write there this, or copy this address to the URL, and it gets the embed MQTT library. 
and then when the library is there in your project, then you refer it with the include MQTT client embed OS that aids and then all done. Then in your main program, it is the network interface with the ESP module. So this is that we call it now in our uh, program as an ESP. So this is now the object there. ESP is our network interface. It's getting the transmit pin number and receive pin number from that app JSON file. And then we have a device IP, which is our device IP. And then we have the broker IP, which is the then the M MQDD broker. So this is an object with this class definition. This is an object with this class definition. And then we have a socket object. And then we have a client, which is the MQTT client defined on that MQTT library. And we establish the client at the socket. And the socket is the TCP socket. And then make a connection to the Wi-Fi. So running the ESP connect and again, the connection information, the SSID, the password, and so on. It's taken from that app JSON file. And then it is just trying that if it succeeded, and then it's, when it is succeeding, it is printing the IP address. So that comes into serial monitor that what is my, uh, my own IP address. And then uh, use with DNS. So con connecting the host with the host name. And then this is the net, our network. Get host by name. So it's making the connection to the host and the host name is taken from here. So in the app JSON file, we have a host name. And then it is giving the host name to the MQTT broker. So it's better to have a look on that app JSON file. So going back here. So this embed app JSON. And then that's Petri's uh, definition file. So there is the FiFi SSID, FiFi password. There is the ESP module received pin. There is the ESP module transmit pin. That one. Uh, MQDD client ID. Mm. Yeah, it needs to be written like this. So quarters. So it comes to mark as quarters. And then comes the name, the client ID. It's the same format as you write your password. So this is the password. And that comes in quarters and with the control mark quarter coming. So you give the client ID in here. Just a moment, that was the whole client ID. Yeah, 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 that's my client ID. So it's my ID when I'm connecting the host. So if you connect the IBM Watson later, you need to have this client ID exactly correct. But doesn't matter 
too much when you connect some test server for the first time. Simple MQTT broker. And then uh, if you are using the broker with the IP, you write the broker IP name here. And then if you are using a broker with a host name, you write your host name here. Broker port, typically that one, and the topic to publish is a test topic. So there is a hierarchy on these topics. <laughs> so it's your tests and it is the name is topic. Uh, I would write here topic one or something like that. So you can also like just write here one uh, piece of text. But uh, now there is a hierarchy. So this is the higher level of the topics. So all the topics are testing topics. And then now comes the topic. I would write here topic one. And then, yeah, this is that it is using the ESP as a VLAN unit. So that was the settings. And now back to the main program. And then here it makes a connection. So MQTT broker set set port. So it is taking the port name the, from that file. So 1883. And here was, yeah, here you get host name and then you get give the host from here and you give it to the MQTT broker. And then you name it data. It is the data packet connect initializer. And then you get it connected with the data. So seems to be version three. I don't know why. And then you give there an MQTT ID. Uh, yeah, you, you, you define, I mean, that this is at the, the, it reads this from the app station and it's now in the pointer ID and then you give it that it's there in the ID, it's the client ID. And uh, then you set there a buffer, buffer, 64 characters maximum in your message. message. And then you write there hello from the embed OS. And so send out a message. So a message is a message from the MQTT library, the message quality of service. You take it from, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you define that it is quality of service zero. Retained false, duplicate false, payload, it's the buffer. Your message here. And the payload length is the length of the buffer. And then you open the socket at your network connect to the MQTT broker and you connect with the data. Oh, that's the, wait a moment. Data is that one. It's connecting with this connection information. And then it is publishing there. So taking the topic and Petri has defined the topic 
on the app.json file. But you could as well write the topic directly in here. And then there is the message. And the message was created a few lines earlier. In takes the message, defining these things for the message and taking text from the buffer. And this is the buffer text here. And when it has published, then it is disconnecting. So you don't need any special hardware for, for this one, but we might anyway try out this one in the laboratory as well and try to get some sensor values integrated in this and then publish those first in any test broker and then later even in the IBM cloud. We will see if we succeed. If, if you like, you can of course test that one as well already at home, but you can also leave it for the laboratory. <laughs>